Your festivals, one of the longest running one is happening right now in DeWitt. Sure is. St. Sophia's Greek Cultural Festival celebrating 50 years. Food, dancing, seminars, that's all part of the tradition. Let's go up there live right now. Say good evening to festival volunteer Sophie Mesco. Sophie, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. <laughs> So, Sophie, 50 years. Congratulations on that, first off. Uh, uh, not easy to host a festival year after year like that, and clearly with the crowd we see behind you, um, the popularity hasn't died. So what's the secret? Give us a hint. <laughs> well, we love to present our best to everybody always. We work really hard all year round to provide good product, good entertainment, good features, and that's what made, has made us so success, successful year after year. So we're thrilled to be back. We're thrilled to be celebrating our 50th. A lot of people like myself have grown up doing this. Some of my first childhood memories are being a part of this festival as a dancer. And as we grow up, we participate in any way that we can. So we love uh, being here and uh, love sharing what we as Greeks love to give uh, to everybody around us. So this was a part of your life growing up. How difficult is it to keep children engaged, especially today in history, heritage, and culture? It is a lot now with all the sports and the extracurriculars that the kids are involved in, but we really work hard to bring our second, third, and fourth generation Greeks back to our church to keep them here engaged. Uh, one way to do that is through the dancing and the kids are growing as they're learning their culture. We have a great Sunday school program so the kids are able to practice our Greek Orthodox faith and grow up knowing it and uh, becoming faithful parishioners. And it's really good because we always know we're home when we're with our other fellow Greeks. If they move out of state or out of Syracuse, they can find a Greek church and feel the same way as they do when they're home. So I think that's a real important part to keep the newer generations engaged. Uh, so we, um, we obviously know Greece has uh, got some delicious cuisine. Um, is there a national dish of Greece? Or is there more than one? Like, what are a couple of the, like, the favorites? Because food attracts people. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Uh, Ecotourism has taken off in Greece, and part of that is the Epicurean part of it. I don't know if that's the right word. It's probably a Greek word from ancient Greece. But uh, everybody loves our fresh produce, our gyro, our souvlaki, our spanakopita. Each region has one of a uh, special thing that they focus on or are known for. So we try to present as much of that here at our festival so everybody can get a taste of it. But when you travel to Greece, you know, you're going to get your authentic Greek salad, you're going to get your gyro sandwich, you're going to get your souvlaki, and it's uh, wonderful to start here and know a little bit about when you travel to Greece. And I'll take one of everything. <laughs> Let's talk about the church because yeah, exactly. that's, that's the center of the festival too. And that's really Really important part of going to the festival is you want people to to look at the church and learn about it, right? Yeah, we're uh, thrilled to provide church tours. We finished an iconography project in our church uh, a few years ago. It's beautiful. It's breathtaking. And if you don't understand the story behind icons and iconography and how things are produced, you can come and take a church tour. Again, we're very faithful people. We like our religion, we practice it, and when we have the kids engaged in something like the dancing, it brings them to the church to learn why they're coming and what they're doing. So uh, we're fortunate to have a strong community here in Syracuse. We love this festival, but it supports our church is the main thing. We do it because we love it and we want to share, but it keeps the lights on, it keeps the building open, all of that stuff too. Sophie, just quick before we let you go, tell us a a little bit more about those dances. Um, is there a significance to them? They are. Greek folk dancing is one of the oldest in the world, and each region has their special dances. And we try again to learn more, uh, obviously, as the kids start with the Greek dancers in training up through the high school and adult dancers. So every region of Greece is known for their different styles of dance. There's a lot that comes from like war and destruction and marching, uh, but we've taken a better twist on it. So, um, but everybody can be a Greek dancer. So we have 
easy ones and hard ones, but just go out there and have a good time. But they are steeped in a rich history, and we also try to explain that to the kids learning them and to the people enjoying the performances. All right, Sophie, well, right after this newscast, I'm heading on over there. I don't know about dancing, but I'm definitely <laughs> going to be eating. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll, we'll make sure we send some back to the studio. <laughs> We're not going to say no to that. Well, maybe you can stick around for a little while. And, yeah. Uh, you don't have to go up there. <laughs> Thanks, Huffy. The skies across central New York looking certainly much more smoke-free. Our air quality actually in the good range. I think we're in the 30s on that chart. The smoky air, though, still plaguing some major cities. And that's affecting operations at airports.